Hello everyone, welcome to the Low Tide Podcast, where we get together and talk about how radical the waves have been recently, and just other surf inquiries and things like that. Uh, here with my co-host, the Narnar Skyman himself. What up? And of course, I am the Elderberry, as uh, the name I've chosen for myself after I've become... A true surf god. It was after and his second that's birth. Here. That's correct. Was I chosen. was uh, reborn within the waters of the Pacific Ocean and took on the name of the Elderberry, the true, uh, I don't know, probably the, the wisest of the berries in the berry family. The loathsome Elderberry. <laughs> <laughs> some call him that is my name sometimes anyway welcome to the show everybody uh i obviously didn't really have anything prepared so um that was just the first thing that came to mind is whenever uh you're rooting around in your subconscious for topics to bring up and does your mind return to the ocean, to the primordial soup in which we all crawled out of? It's kind of an odd topic to bring up a podcast that's based in the Midwest, to be fair. Yeah. But yeah. I'm cool with it. I mean, I'm cool with talking about the moon and the tides and gravity mm. and how it yeah. affects uh, the tides. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Could you imagine if we didn't have a moon? What would that be like? <laughs> Yeah, like, well, we we would still have waves and stuff. That's a natural, I think that's a natural occurrence of the wind and, so I, maybe? I, I mean, doesn't, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, I, don't, I, I think the mood has science. a really big part to do with the waves. I don't know if it, they would be more chaotic or, uh, or what. Maybe we could have a scientist yeah. weigh in. I don't know maybe. any scientists. <laughs> Me, no, me neither. So you're just going to have to take what we say as fact. <laughs> we don't have any scientists to uh, confirm the things we're saying, but that means we also don't have a scientist to deconfirm or debunk the things that we're saying. So sort of a, uh, what is that, Schrodinger's cat of true information? Oh, yeah, it's either, uh, you know, it's... It's the truth until you open the box and see that it's a blatant lie. But until then, it's the yeah. truth or a lie. <laughs> you don't know. You don't know until you open up that box. Are you going to be the one to open the box? Are you going to be the one to kill the mood? Are you going to be that guy no. at the party that's no. like, oh, no, I, nah, man, I quit that drinking thing 15 years ago. But I still like to go to mm -hmm. parties where there's alcohol because I like the scene. Yeah. Not dogging anybody well, not that's, only, uh, yeah. you know, on the road to recovery or anything, but why put yourself in this situation? Right? Yeah. That's like having a, I don't know, an addiction, not addiction, a, uh, like an allergy to seafood and like going to eat at Red Lobster every Friday. <laughs> like, no, I'll mean? just like, have, why? I'll just have the cheesy bread rolls. <laughs> mm -hmm, Nothing else. Mm -hmm. Like, why put yourself in that situation? <laughs> You have to, I mean, yeah, the that's the difference. Uh, you have to knowingly, like, you're knowing, they're knowingly going to this party, knowing that they're going to get asked for alcohol, and they can just be like, nah. Like, it's not like they're being yeah. forced to go. It's not like a, you know, a company thing or a, whatever, a birthday. It's like, mm -hmm, oh, it's going to mm -hmm. be a rager. We're having a kegger at Kevin's house, bro. And you're like, oh, yeah, that sounds awesome. That's great. And oh, in nah, the back of your mind, nah, it's like, dude. well, now it gives me a chance to go and say i'm 15 years sober and tell my depressing story yeah. at this college party and i'm, I'm 40 a, yeah. <laughs> i'm 40 <laughs> there's the kicker there we go 40 year old man two divorces means, yeah. three kids mm -hmm. from separate women one of them was a girlfriend but you married two times yeah 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 third time's the charm right that's what they say, but uh, that's not totally true. It's, I've, uh... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, 
How do we how do we get on to that topic? Uh, I don't uh, know. It started with talking about some hippie bullshit, like the waves. Yeah, yeah. The oh, the moon and the and the tides and stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know anything about the fucking moon, dude. Like, I know it's. I don't know if it's like a big part of astrology. I don't know anything about astrology either. Astronomy, or astronomy, or whichever one whichever they're both like tied to the to the stars the cosmos. star sign but yeah i think astrology is like type oh I'm, stuff. A, I'm a pisces and therefore i can't okay. be friends so with a, a leo uh-huh. astronomy is a study of space stuff ah uh, astronomy is the like the measurement of the movement of the stars right yeah and things like that yes exactly the actual the study charts. of Mm. Logi, yeah, yeah, yeah. That uh, suffix that we learned recently means the study of, or le- <laughs> I say learned recently. Maybe I just learned recently, or remembered. But yeah, we're a podcast and we talk about stuff and things. That was our intro. I hope you mm-hmm. like it. If uh, you know, this is like episode twenty six, twenty seven. If you know what you're getting into at this point, yeah. unless you're just dropping in, you're one of those people that. Like, well, I'm not going to watch episode one. Fuck that. I mean, who's going to watch episode one of Joe <laughs> Which Rogan? Which is fair. You know? Yeah. I'm not. I don't... Yeah, I ain't got I, time for I, that. I think you can, but... No, for real, it's... However many years ago, like a decade old now, I mean, why would you go back and do... Watch episode one of anything? Or listen, rather, to podcasts. It doesn't make sense. But, like, television, that's a different story. Yeah, I mean, you can't jump into season, uh, the last season of Breaking Bad. I mean, you could, I guess, but... Yeah. Wouldn't really make sense. No, no. It's it's not like old sitcoms and shit where you can jump in and it's all episodic, self-contained little story. Stories are complicated now, man. They span multiple seasons multiple hours within one season i don't know why i'm explaining like how (laughs) television is is done for those of you that have never watched a uh you know a serialized broadcast of any kind here's your explanation of how that works Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. big inside tip from the uh from the guys behind the scenes when we're not out surfing and crushing those gnar waves we're making television like that time we were in the british version of the office (laughs) yeah (laughs) see the little known fact is yeah we were in the show like we like we revealed last episode but we put ourselves in the show it like post editing and that's where that's why it was really easy to cut us out of it yeah so, it's kind of like what uh george lucas did to you know the prequels right mm-hmm, no no the original mm-hmm. is it which which one is the one he fucked up like the is it the original <laughs> trilogy that he added all the cgi the original trilogy yeah he added all the cgi yeah. bullshit <laughs> yeah i mean it probably wasn't solely his decision to be fair i'm sure that no you know who, uh, lucasfilm at the time was still like an independent corporation that was still like hey we need to make money, and you haven't made a new Star Wars in a minute. Let's re-release so, the old ones with a bunch of bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> and they still keep yeah. changing it. I mean, <laughs> Disney still keeps changing it. Yeah, dude. I I think it's like impossible to get your hands on the original original trilogy. Like what was shown in theaters. Yeah. Yeah. I think that yeah, that's probably impossible to get. It's mm-hmm. unless you have like an old VCR tape of it. Like they're not making new ones, no, even if. No. And then eventually, uh, things are gonna stop being able to play. I was gonna, <laughs> I was gonna say VCR tapes, but fucking nothing plays a VCR tape but a VCR player. Uh, Those things only have like a twenty, like twenty year life lifespan. <laughs> Oh shit! Until, really? Yeah, VCR tapes. Oh yeah, because it is still like a little film mm-hmm. inside of it. Yeah, eventually it'll all be decayed and cracked, and you know, uh, whatever data, uh, data rot, I believe is data what it's called. rot. Mm. 
It's a problem with like old floppy disks and stuff, optical disks, stuff like that. Even CDs. Uh, yeah. You know that uh, Freddy Fish or Pajama Sam combo pack that you played when you were a kid. Still have it on CD. That thing's gonna be useless like five, ten years from now. <laughs> if it's not already useless. Am I really? I'm probably dating myself by saying those games. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. Um, data. I, I I never really understood that. It's it's like the the device itself doesn't have any i don't know organic compounds like what is there to to decompose like is it just because there's an electrical current that runs through it and over time that current wears it down i mean it depends on how it's stored it, for the most part um huh anything like light hitting it dust getting on it uh i mean stuff just degrades over time too i mean that's uh and yeah you know, fact of life uh humans everything we talked about entropy <laughs> and it's in a very smaller way entropy yeah. is doing its and... part and um it, i think in recent years with like uh you know a hard disk drive solid disk drives uh nvme storage you know mm-hmm. cloud-based storage as well i mean those will be up forever as long as the servers stay up as long as and it, and it, as long as there's a continuous power supply power supply and also backups moving mm-hmm. that media or data onto a new every couple of years because even you know solid state disks they can go bad yeah once uh you know it's they're different than hard disk because i won't go into the specifics but they can still like as good as they are they will still go bad it's just a mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. you can only write to something so many times before the space is taken up in some way shape or form whether it's just random bits or uh orphaned files whatever hmm. eventually it'll be full hmm. and won't be able to hold any more data unless you format it at that point though there's probably some new going to be some new fancy thing like right now it's all nvme I see. Huh. Yeah. But why, you know, I, uh... the VHS, that one's, you know, it makes sense because it's on, like, a film. I don't know yeah. the inner, the workings of it, but, you know, time will just take its toll on it unless it's stored in, like, an airtight space that has uh, humidity control. There's mm, ways to preserve yeah. this stuff, but at the time when it was made, like it's... nobody really thought mm. about it. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Like the, when they were writing the Constitution of the United States of America, they didn't think like, hey, this is going to be in a museum somewhere forever. They were just like, we need to write this shit down. And here's a big piece of paper. Let's go. Parchment. Yeah. Parchment. Parchment <laughs> Even worse. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Like that i was thinking about how because they they have that stored and kept in you know national treasure and stuff like they, it's all temperature controlled and humidity and the, how do they how do they figure that stuff out like what what kind of science do you get into to determine a like an adequate preserving atmosphere that's a good question. It, um, if I had to take a guess, I would say forensics, maybe. Would it be a like forensic a forensic thing? analysis? Mm, because you mm-hmm. want to try and I don't know. I don't know if, if that makes sense, but it would make sense that you want to try and get as much data out of something. And you would and and by doing that, you would learn the best way that something is preserved, so you can get more from it. Yeah, That's kind of my line yeah. of thing. I mean, there's probably an actual science dedicated to it. Uh huh. Could be a number of things. Yeah, Could, but like, it, like what... prior experience with stuff. Like, oh, this fucking book that we had, uh, just leaving it out in the open, it it rotted away. But this one that we kept in a a chest or an airtight <laughs> container. I was thinking a a jar. <laughs> jar. <laughs> you and them jars, bro. 
<laughs> I know you collect those Funko Pop, but whatever you do with them, I don't want to know. Oh. Funko Pop in that jar collection. <laughs> that is that is my secret to know. And for those who know, to know. You know what I'm saying? I do. Wink, wink. Nudge, nudge. You know, at the heart of this yeah, whole conversation, uh, that makes sense. Yeah. I think data preservation is important. Mm, mm-hmm. uh, emulation. If we're, if we're going to, you know, round back to video games, I think emulation, yeah. stuff like that is important. Yeah, definitely. There's so- there's... Sorry, go ahead. So many games. Uh, Yeah, there's so many games in the past of uh, just shit that I wasn't old enough to play when it came around, and there's it's not super easy to get a hold of. Like like arcade machines nowadays, those are super expensive, I think, to even just to maintain, to get one and to make sure that it still works and... I think there's a process of like swapping out parts and you know like a computer but it just runs a certain arcade game. Yeah, um but they're, and, and like ar- it, you're right, arcade machines are a really big one. Uh You know, it's not like you're going to be able to play oh god, I, I can't even think like uh Time Crisis. Yeah. There have been some console ports, but it's not the same experience, really. No, playing it. definitely not. Um, so, uh, with emulation, unless you're like actually spending money to get a either an actual original Time Crisis, for example, Time Crisis arcade machine, mm-hmm. you could do that, and then you could also get like a motherboard or whatever that could run Time Crisis on it. I guess that would be a kind of a workaround. Yeah. Um. That it, I think that's a big thing with like uh, Raspberry Pis, right? That's their deal. Oh, is that yeah. I mean, you can do a lot of a shit pretty with decent Pies. computer. Yeah, it's a very. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. It has a, lo- a very small footprint, but you can you know you can load up like the entire Super Nintendo library on it if you want. Man. Yeah, and it's the size of like a Game Boy, right? It's mm-hmm. not even. It's not even probably a what size of a credit card is yeah it? it's pretty small uh, i didn't know enough about computers when i first heard about raspberry pi so i was like i mean still a lot of computer stuff sounds just like magic voodoo to me honestly it all kind of is so. magic voodoo <laughs> when you really get down to it yeah like we it, we were talking about the uh like cds and stuff i learned um in one of my classes about how reading a cd it's like it's just peaks and valleys basically the laser reads a distance on it and it's like a like a micro difference between a peak and a valley but like if it's a peak it's a one if it's a valley it's a zero so it's all still like binary but it just like the laser reads the changes and differences and shit it, like as it spins that fast which is fu- it doesn't it doesn't seem physically possible like it just <laughs> it's all happening <laughs> on a no very way. small scale and yeah it's crazy that that at a point in time that 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 it was common for people to have that in their homes like if you wanted to burn a cd fuck yeah i just downloaded a uh this uh, system of a down slipknot uh duo mashup yeah. on limewire <laughs> Mm-hmm. That was actually a dot exe, and I got a virus. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, I, that, that's it's the same way discs are written too. The laser just carves those peaks and valleys into the disc. Yeah, which is fucking nuts. It, uh, it's so weird. I, I don't. It's know. also part of know, why man. CDs are like the worst form of storing media. Because you get a scratch. I mean, you get a scratch on the disc. It's basically it's ruined. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For example, I have uh, I have Chrono Cross. It's a two disc game on PS One. I have both discs, but this one is scratched, and it gets up mm. to a certain point in the game every time. I've done it multiple times. It gets to a certain point in the game, crashes. Can't oh, get past it. Man. Just because of that, you know, there's like one little scratch on it. 
it's awful. And yet the the crazy thing is that that's an entire like interactive video game that's just made up of a bunch of ones and zeros micro lasered onto a disc. Like it, it, I don't know. It blows my mind, dude. I just don't understand computers as the uh the gist of this. Well, luckily computers also don't understand you. Mm. At least not yet. They're learning though. That is a good thing. <laughs> It is a good thing. Yeah. I mean, shit, at this rate, uh, with as much data as being collected on us from whatever we use on the internet, they probably know us better than we know ourselves. More than likely, yeah. It's like, share some of that information with me, bro. Like, here I am flailing about in the universe without any sort of direction or heading, and yet, you know, you guys know what the fuck I've been doing for the last whatever... 10, 12, 15 years. You can't drop some of that knowledge my way. Like, hey, you know, you seem to really like, uh, I don't know, surfing. So <laughs> it's like surfing and you like surfing. tides and the moon. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like, give me some of that information so I can go and be like, oh, well, maybe I'll go explore the moon then. Who's, who, who's done that yet? Nobody. Nobody's explored, Nobody's explored the, moon. the moon. The moon landing was fake. You heard it here first. The moon landing is 100% Run back fake. that footage, editor. <laughs> you think there's going to be a breeze on the moon? There are no Come stars. <laughs> stars are in space. The moon is in space. Where are the stars? That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. if, you're in a, if you're in a space suit, Where's all the air going? You're just breathing back in your own carbon Where does the dioxide. Farts go. Yeah, you're just breathing your own farts in space. That that's doesn't gross. seem. It, yeah, that's that's not. Who would want to do that? Design a better space suit. Get woke, folks. Get woke. Honestly, open your eyes up to the truth about the moon landing. If there even is a moon. Mm -hmm. we, we're not gonna get into that right now mm -hmm. that's a bit too uh that's a bit that's a couple layers deep for you folks mm -hmm. are you talking are you talking uh like mass illusionary psychosis that we all just think there's a moon because everybody thinks there's a moon yeah or maybe there's just not a moon and there's that <laughs> doesn't have to be complex elliot it can be something as simple as like is it really there how do i know i can't go touch it i just have to believe that people that have touched it yeah people who say that they've touched it i i haven't touched it haven't <laughs> i haven't have so... you listener have you dear listener no. think about it right yeah can you can you say that it's even real if you have you have you touched the moon? Have you done anything except absorb its reflected light? If it's even <laughs> reflecting light. <laughs> <laughs> it might just be a, you know, real big light bulb far off in the distance and uh everybody's living a You ever see the Truman show? Everybody's <laughs> living a Truman show life. I have seen that. You know, it's funny. I kind of wanted to bring up Jim Carrey tonight on the show. Oh, because the Sonic okay. movie came out recently. I haven't seen it yet. I've seen the first one. Oh, I haven't even seen the first one. But I should. I don't know anyway. if I've shared the sentiment on the show, but I think they ruined the first one by switching the <laughs> model yeah. to Sonic. <laughs> I think you did mention that. It should have been, it should have been. Give the us original the, abomination. Give us the abomination cut. <laughs> I want to see that. <laughs> and, I, and more importantly, I want to see Sonic 2 with that. <laughs> but back to my point jim carrey i wanted to bring him up because i still don't, i haven't looked into it i still don't know if this is a rumor or not but apparently he's retiring from acting after sonic 2 oh <laughs> and then the, the thing was it was like because nothing could top his performance <laughs> <laughs> nothing he's done in the past <laughs> could top his performance as uh dr robotnik in sonic oh 2. man 
and he just thought it's terrible. You know, it was the perfect place for the story to end the perfect place for his career mm. more importantly forget the truman He's show forget i love out. you philip morris forget cable guy <laughs> <laughs> forget all of that it all pales in comparison Ace ventura nothing, nothing. compared to dr robot nothing wow that's that's amazing. I fucking love Jim Carrey, dude. That's <laughs> <laughs> so. Congratulations, Jim Carrey, on it. You started strong and you ended stronger. Ended stronger. Ended on a end on a high note. That's that's awesome. That's fucking great, <laughs> man. I don't want him to retire, but like, and I don't he, think he, he is. I think time, that was just time, but... started for the. For uh, that specific okay, okay. fact, was you know like nothing could top. <laughs> Sonic too, I think it's hilarious. Mm. Yeah, the Sonic movies definitely got the fucking uh, viral marketing and memes and using the internet outrage to its advantage. Like they really tapped in, man. Yeah, they did. I mean, it's the f- maybe not the first example, but yeah, definitely the backlash against Sonic One and the perfect version of sonic that they had before (laughs) they ruined it people really weren't happy about that you know you know i think anybody on the internet knows sonic fans are like a different breed yeah like with you know chris chan his whole sonic chew thing Mm. including that the sonic and i'm not saying he is encompasses the whole sonic uh spectrum because there is a spectrum. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course. You could probably write a whole a like th- like dissertation on like sociologic whatever <laughs> on Sonic fans. Really, you could. I, I really feel like you could. Just go on Twitter and probably like, look up the uh, you know hashtag Sonic. Just look at that and see mm. what you find. <laughs> It sounds dangerous. That's, that sounds like uh, something that I don't personally want to do. But, man. Sonic fans. That's I really... I, I wish I could say I was more of a Sonic fan. I really haven't played many of the games. 100% I haven't played one all the way through. I think... I think the game that I played the most was the <laughs> the Flash version of the like original arcade Sonic. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I played that one the most. <laughs> I think that might be a good that, thing. I that mean, might be for the better. Because I on I, the other I've never hand, like... I played a lot of Sonic. I played all, not all of mm. them. I would say I didn't have. Sonic 06 was my last. I didn't play it all the way through. That's like the worst one, by the way. Uh, In Sonic, uh, Sonic lore. <laughs> Ew, that's too bad. You, you, I mean, you may have seen it before. It had like Final Fantasy level cutscenes. Like it was like they put all of the budget into the cutscenes. Mm. Um, and the game was just—it <laughs> was awful. Oh, the base, like the. <laughs> Like all the all the budget went to the cutscene, and like for gameplay and stuff, it was just bad. Worse than uh, Sonic oh, uh, Adventure, and way worse than Sonic Adventure Two. But I'm not gonna go into a Sonic rant here on the show, not yet. That'll come once we get to know each other better. I'm talking to the audience, yeah. you know. Yeah. You get a taste. That's more of a. Mm-hmm. That's not a first date basis. That's like a going into a second date you're like hey by the way did i mention my rabid sonic obsession because that's a deal breaker it's also an icebreaker <laughs> that's how you uh should approach <laughs> oh uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what you should say if you want to engage mm. a member of the opposite or same sex that's right just bring up Everybody how much you love sonic hear. yep yeah. And say that anything less than playing up until about the 2006 era, a deal breaker for me. If you haven't played any of those games, <laughs> don't even talk to me. Damn. And so with that, we're announcing the end of the podcast, folks. We've 
I had a good run. <laughs> That's it. But <laughs> can't go any higher can't than get this. Past, mm-hmm. Can't get past our sonic differences. Now, I wish I had played more of them. I just never had a fucking uh, Sega console. Like, I've never owned a Sega console. No one else did either. No one else <laughs> did. I mean, like, I had friends who had a Genesis, but it was never me who had a Genesis, so... Which is the... I, I don't know. I don't know anything. There was an Earthworm Jim game that came out on the Genesis. I know that. And there was a Lion King game. Yeah, that one's pretty infamous for being, like, really crazy difficult for a mm. child's game. Yeah. I mean, Genesis had some good games. Uh, Golden Axe. I believe Gold Fantasy Max. Star was also a Genesis exclusive mm. JRPG. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't know a whole lot about the Genesis, to be honest. I don't fucking know. I don't know. It's unfor- it was a cool console. It was just over... I mean, it, it, it was kind of advanced for the time. They kind of screwed themselves... I, I think we talked about this before, but how, like, you had the Genesis... Or, the, the like, a Genesis, and then you had, like, the Sega CD... Or maybe this was the Sega Saturn. I don't know. Yeah. But there was one that was like you had to Frankenstein a bunch of different parts into because you'd have like the the main console. Then you plug something into the cartridge slot and that was the 32X. And then on the side of it, you could plug something in. That was the Sega CD, but it needed the Sega 32X to even run. The fuck? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm already lost. I'm not, I'm so, not, I'm okay. not kidding. It you're was right. like they were all the, like they were worse than Nintendo is about peripheral. I mean, maybe that's not true, but they were pretty bad about the peripheral. At least in terms of like you needed this thing yeah. on top of another like you thing. Have to run with this, and there were only yeah. like a handful of games for the Sega CD at the end. Yeesh. Because <laughs> then, then it was like, oh, here's the Dreamcast. Oh man, R.I.P. And by that point, it was Nintendo sixty four and PlayStation. Mm, so mm-hmm. around that time, I want to yeah, say it might have been PS two. Sixty four. Sixty four. Yeah, oh, no. I think PS two was coming out. I think so. I and think it, it was, was like 200 bucks, and you also get a DVD player? Fuck yeah. Mm-hmm. Round back to fucking shitty storage media. <laughs> yeah, and the original PS2 where you couldn't even like take your games out unless the console was powered on. Which I guess is not different for like old or new consoles now, but yeah, not a, unless people you aren't playing with like disc games anymore. Yeah. Which that seems to be the that's the that's the go to the future. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's a topic in of itself too. Yeah, yeah, it is. I uh, I keep holding on to like physical games, and I keep holding out for a uh, a physical version of the PS Five, but. As I think about it more, I'm like, why am I doing this? I, <laughs> why am I doing this? Yeah. I'm not playing all of these games that I'm hoarding, but I don't know. It feels like it just feels good to collect it. I don't know. No, I think, Maybe. you know, I think there's something to it. I really do. Uh, I went pretty much the only game I bought for my, when I've got an Xbox One S, the only game I bought for it on disc was Overwatch. Oh, and that nice. was like the same day that I bought it, and then after that, I just went digital, completely. My whole library mm-hmm. is digital, mm-hmm. besides for my Switch games, my Wii U games. That's like all I have. Oh, shit. And, and Damn, Steam. good on you, man. I mean, I, I I don't know if it's good because I mean, our Microsoft server. I mean, and this extends to Steam, GOG. Yeah. I mean, GOG is a little bit better because you can actually download the game onto your machine. Yeah, and Steam, they've or Valve, whatever they've said, they they will let you do that if they ever are at a point in time where they have to shut down. Like it's all dependent on if their servers mm-hmm. are up. Mm-hmm. Same with Sony, 
Same with Nintendo and Microsoft. If you own your games digitally, you're dependent on their server being up. Or servers, Uh in this case. For you to even be be able to just play it, just access the thing that you... yeah. I mean, if you have it downloaded locally onto your hard disk or uh, your SD or solid state, then yeah, I mean, you can play it whenever. Play it offline, whatever. But... If their servers go down, you won't ever be able to download it again. Yeah. That's kind of the whole thing with the 3DS store. Oh, yeah. Is that officially closed? It's shutting down. You'll still be able to download your games. But you won't be able to buy any new games. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. So. But how long will that last? Until they shut that down, you can't even download a game you bought. I hope you have like what was the max sd card it's like 32 gigabytes it's all you can use on the uh or is it 64 well i had i had a big one i think you can i think i put a 64 gig 64. in 64 i mean that's not bad yeah but how big is the entire 3ds library uh i don't know it can't be that big like i have a shitload of games for the 3ds right yeah but i you know are all downloaded on my system and i still have ton of space but but you need to download everything that you own yeah yeah which is weird and even stuff that's like 3ds exclusive like the fire emblem games Mm -hmm. you won't be able to play those Mm -hmm. without a hard uh, hard copy so those will shoot up in price like fates that'll probably be like 300 400 bucks 20 years from now i bet for a used Uh, copy man and so maybe I should be holding on to all of my physical copy games. And then just, I don't know, I won't be able to cash in on them until I'm an old man. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if you're saving them to sell later, then definitely. So I, I suppose. But. I, I mean, I suppose I could, but. What about, like, day one patches and stuff? Mm, Unless, if yeah. you bought a game day one, you got to get that day one patch. I mean, you don't have to. You could probably start it up. But you're not going to get all the you know every game is released with like bugs day one yeah then you get the day one patch and that fixes most of them and then it's patched Mm -hmm. you know a year two years afterwards yeah but in the future if those servers shut down where are you gonna get it where are you gonna get them patches Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where are you gonna get them patches then what are you gonna do Unless it's emulated by that point. Yeah. Which, again, emulation is cool. You were advocating for it, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Are you you're pro, pro emulation? I'm pro, yeah, I'm pro emulation. Nice. That's a hot stance to take, dude. There's a lot of anti uh, emulators out there. <laughs> there are. <laughs> People don't and they like have some uh, real strong rhetoric. To, to not emulate games. Fuck Some data real compelling preservation. Arguments. Fuck that game, that, <laughs> that really niche game that you played when you were six years old that nobody else has played, but you remember it. Fuck that game. Yeah, fuck it. You're going to play the AAA games of service titles like we tell you to, and you're going to keep buying them every year. I, I, you're never gonna relive your childhood. No, you're, you know. Ne- I mean, it's kind of it's interesting you bring that up because think about it. There might be a child that has been born in our lifetime at some point that has played a game that eventually won't be playable anymore because they shut down the servers. Yeah, I mean, there are already games like that. Uh, I think. Yeah, like mobile games for sure. Oh well, yeah, that yeah, that's a big one. Those don't ever that's get preserved. I don't think you can play the original Angry Birds anymore. I don't know. I, I didn't. Uh, I don't think I had a smartphone at the time when Angry Birds was a hot thing. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't say, but like that really weird game you downloaded one night because you were like drunk and you're like, oh, that looks fun. That might not be yeah. available anymore. That might just not exist, yeah. and you won't ever be able to play it again. Mm-hmm. It's. Uh, but we were we were talking about children who 
we're going to play a game. Not oh, sure. sure. Okay. A uh, good example. Get drunk one night and <laughs> download a game. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. On their parents' Chil- phone. Okay. For an example for children today, <laughs> Fortnite. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How long until Fortnite is not profitable that they shut down the servers? And Mm -hmm. all those V-Bucks you spent, that $25 Fortnite card, whatever. Mm -hmm. It it doesn't matter. I mean, maybe they'll let you keep your cosmetics, but there won't be any way to buy new cosmetics. Unless, I mean, they'll probably keep it up for a while after the end of the game's life. But eventually Uh there will be a point where you just can't anymore. That, that, that's yeah, gi- that's given like, Fortnite uh, is going to die, which I don't mm, see mm-hmm. happening anytime soon, but it's possible 30, 40, 50 years from now. They'll, yeah, they'll be talking sure. about Fortnite oh, like it's Pac Man. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be so weird. Whew, it's going to be weird. I, thinking about the future, thinking about being an old man. That's, uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's spooky. It scares me. Yeah. To think about what uh, what life is going to be like in our elder years, man. Be very different I'm, if technologically it, or technology is advancing is the way it is. It'll mm-hmm. be different, that's for sure. Yeah. And this relates to every you... aspect of technology, not just video games. Video games will be interesting from our viewpoint. Yeah. Because we'll be like so old back then, we can say, "Oh well." when i was your age i had to put a disc into a console to play it like shut mm-hmm, up old man mm-hmm. while they <laughs> fucking download 50 terabyte some whatever's popular among us whatever among us in 2050 yeah, among us is super vr you die yeah, in the game you really... die in real life mm-hmm mm-hmm it's pr- stay alive baby pretty sus. that was a fucking that was a cool movie did you ever see that movie? What? Stay Alive? I don't think so. Maybe. Oh, dude. It was it was pretty cool. It was like uh well Frankie Muniz is, was in it, which is cool. And it's like I don't know, a killer video game. It's kind of a stupid ass premise, but you play you play this like horror video game and if you die in it, you die in like the same way in real life and I, f- I forget, like, how it was being caused, but it was some, I don't know, weird magic thing. But Frankie Muniz at one point in, in the movie is sitting, like, in a van on the laptop, like, playing this game. And then, like, he has a headset to the, like, person, that one of the main characters who's, like... Because in the game, like, everything is modeled after this, like, real life. I don't know, it was, like, a spooky house or something. And he was, like, giving him directions, and he, like, threw a crowbar down in the game, and then it, like, appeared in real life, and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> no, I don't think I've ever um, seen that. That sounds cool, though. Oh, okay. What was it called? Uh, Stay Alive. It's It wasn't, it wasn't a great movie, probably. Definitely not a good, like, horror movie or anything, but I was a, a young lad when I saw it, and it freaked me out for a little bit. Is Stay Alive a like, real oh, game? Will there be a... St- um, I'm just looking at Google. So. Oh, are you looking- <laughs> Is it a real game? I don't know. I don't <laughs> Will think there so. be a Stay Alive 2? <laughs> <laughs> Where's that sequel 20 years later? Come on, Hollywood. Get on it. Get on it. <laughs> what the fuck, man? Hashtag Stay Alive 2. Oh, it's a perfect year, 2022. <laughs> Stay alive, 2022. Stay alive, 22. The, uh, the gritty reboot of a gritty horror movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't think they can get Frankie Muniz for it. He has, like, amnesia or Alzheimer's or something. What? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's. I, I'm not trying to downplay it. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Is Alzheimer's? I don't know if he had, like, like, some kind of brain... <laughs> He has something wrong with his brain. He like he can't remember oh, any of man. Uh, uh whatever any of the stuff he's been in. Oh, he can't remember any of Malcolm in the yes, Middle. Yes, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like that he cannot sucks. remember any of it. That's such a good show. Yeah. Oh man, I almost said he had like water on the brain. <laughs> <laughs> it's very insensitive. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it's something that it has to do with his memory, and he can't like oh, remember stuff. Oh man. 
That's awful. Shit. Yeah, sorry. I don't mean to be a Debbie Downer, but yeah. No, I did I didn't know. Damn. Kind of like figuring out Shia LaBeouf is actually an asshole. <laughs> yeah. Like a legitimate <laughs> shitty scummy person. <laughs> Not as not I know, like, I don't want to believe it. I like him. I like him as an actor, but man, I haven't heard any like stories of like, hey, Shia LaBeouf came up to me and said something nice about uh the shirt I was wearing, and then gave me a hundred dollars. Honey Boy was clapped. such a good movie, and it sucks that he's really an asshole. <laughs> like, I, oh. Honey Bee was so good. I haven't seen it. It's it's him playing his father. Oh and yeah, like you can see where yeah. why he is the way he is. I guess, like that's why yeah. it's such a good movie. But it doesn't excuse the shitty things he's. It sucks because, like you know, there was that yeah. whole whatever Shia LaBeouf hiding in the shadow. Shia LaBeouf, actual cannibal Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, that popped up in my head the other day too. <laughs> that is. <laughs> creme de la creme early it well not early internet but like peak <laughs> internet before everything was you know three different websites yeah yeah before every thumbnail had a face somebody making a face with the red arrow pointing to something yeah yeah that's uh i mean that's mainly youtube's fault for their shitty mm. algorithm those are the videos that get clicked on, and it's mainly children that click on them because, you know, they're children and they're dumb. Yeah. Big red arrows catch catch baby's eye. I remember seeing it happen in real time because there was this TF2 YouTuber I watched, like, way back when, like 2014, 15. And then after Overwatch came out, he started doing Overwatch content, and then Fortnite came out, and that was when the... Uh, you know yeah and everybody did Fortnite for a minute yeah, yeah like oh here's a a picture of my face and i'm like doing the home alone screen and then a red arrow pointing at <laughs> <laughs> whatever is relevant sometimes not relevant to the video yep until they cracked the youtube genome those motherfuckers they did it they building an ai that's just shitty youtube videos like yeah <laughs> that's like the uh the educator juiciator for youtube see yeah that's a good word i just it doesn't uh it's not pronounced the way it, at least i don't pronounce it the way it's spelled there's like an there's Adju an I. adjudicator oh adjudicator yeah ad a D yeah, I was, U G I was definitely J. Bold, but, uh, <laughs> I can't spell Sorry, yeah, it's educator. Educator. Yeah, yeah, educator. That's a. What does that word mean? <laughs> someone <laughs> yeah, who presides, about... judges, and arbitrates during a formal dispute or competition. Ah uh, ha 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 ha! Okay, okay. So like, oh, it's the okay, it's the word for judge, but you're not like. You're not a judge. A judge is like an officiated, yeah, whatever. You have a, an official judge degree or something. Judge degree. I went to judge school. Yeah. <laughs> I went to judge school. Thank you very much. When are we gonna get fucking Judge Dredd? I was gonna say judges, guilty. Dude? Yeah. <laughs> You're homeless. That's the future I want. Guilty. Six years in the cube. <laughs> Yeah, that Carl Urban fucking reboot was so Dude. good, and they never did anything more with it. Right? So even, the that... like, there was a video game, too, and it was pretty good. Oh, nice. You could, like, you could, <laughs> there was literally a button so you could judge people, and it would be, <laughs> it'd be like this fat chicken, and she's like, oh, you were loitering six months. <laughs> you just arrest him <laughs> right then and there. <laughs> That's fucking awesome, man. Ah, oh, yeah, that was a great movie. Great movie. Damn. I've never seen the old ones, but uh, <laughs> I've seen like like clips of the old one because it was Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, it was Sylvester Stallone <laughs> and uh, uh, oh god, I can't, I can't remember his name. Yeah, 
God damn it. Rob Schneider. Yeah. War yeah. or something like that. God. <laughs> so goofy. Man. You said. <laughs> Yeah, but that's the future I'm ready for. Yeah, me I, want, too. I want some Judge Dread style dystopian uh, sci fi. Mm-hmm. Uh, very, <laughs> what do you call it? Autocratic. Yeah, I, I guess it would be. Uh, I guess it's like not really a good thing, and that's the point of Judge Dread. Yeah, but... and, and that Carl Urban movie, yeah. there's like a fucking <laughs> just a homeless squatter dude. He like look. He like looks the 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 new girl and he's like what's the uh you know vagrancy six months in the cube i mean literally that's like what he says and he's like don't be here when you get back and that was like the nicest thing he did in the whole movie was let that homeless guy go yeah right then he just fuck shit up in that uh hyper oh, apartment man. whatever you call it yeah mama's house or something yeah yeah the peach tree was a part of it or something? I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. Remind me a lot of the raid. Have Dude, you ever seen? Yeah. You've seen the raid. I've seen it once, but it was like it's the same premise. It's just him going through like an entire apartment apartment block and fucking yeah, shit up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Crazy nonstop action movie, like legit nonstop action. Those are fucking great. Yeah. Like a uh, crank. You ever yeah, see crank? crank? Fucking Jason, Jason Statham. Statham. It's great. Do <laughs> I look like I have cunt written on me forehead? <laughs> fucking love that. <laughs> or like, I don't know if it was crank one or crank two where he has sex with his girlfriend at the train station. Yeah. With his heart puppy. Yeah. <laughs> Such a ridiculous premise, but it was so good. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Great movies. Dread 2. There we go. Come, fucking. Starring Shia LaBeouf. What the hell? Yeah. I'll, I'll watch yeah. it. I'll watch it. He can be Judge Dread. He can. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'd believe it, but. I don't think so. I think Carl Urban mm. nailed it. Not oh, yeah. seeing the Sylvester yeah. Stallone version, except for that one scene that is like always. I can't remember what it, I'm gonna have to look it up after the episode and after we're done because mm-hmm. I need to know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it was like a, it was a big deal that uh, Sylvester Stallone like because the character of Judge Dredd, like he never takes off his helmet, you know. Yeah. But he's Sylvester Stallone, and then he, so he was the big draw to the movie at the time. They were like, we can't. We can't hide the main guy's face for the whole movie. Like, he's the reason people are watching it. And then, so, it, you know, already off to a bad start with the source, with the source material. Yeah. So not great. Yeah. And, I mean, I can't, I can't say I've read the comics or anything, so I would want to. But... Literally, my only frame of reference is the Carl Urban movie in that game. <laughs> Mm. which i only saw a let's play <laughs> of to be fair oh okay so, okay but i'm not wrong you could literally arrest any but like every npc could be arrested and it would just be some bullshit reason man like oh you were smoking in a non-smoking area three months mm. Mm. and you got a score based on how many people you arrested it would show you how many years <laughs> of incarceration <laughs> at the end of the level <laughs> Damn. <laughs> That's dark, dude. Holy shit. Yeah, you were just you were judged based on how you judged people. Wow. And the more you judged. Really incentivizing like police fucking militant police work. Jesus. It sounds cool in theory, but it's not a future you'd want because you'd be the person that was arrested for like standing in a no standing zone on a tuesday yep yeah and then you'd have you to go in the isolation the cube mm-hmm. and then you lose your mind in the isolation cube and as they pull you out and you're fucking cuckoo crazy and then i'm sure in this dystopian future they're not taking care of their mentally sick 
they're probably like taking them out back and letting them pet the rabbits and they don't even take care of the mentally sick in our timeline <laughs> no they, in our time <laughs> <laughs> think they're gonna do it in a fucking cool ass sci-fi dystopian cyberpunk future fuck no fuck no fuck no it's that's just too bad it's just too it's bad. unfortunate yeah it is it really is man but we don't live in judge dread world so not yet not yet. Not yet. Am I right, guys? You know what I'm talking about. Hey, oh. All of you ha, 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 ha. are politically savvy. You know what I'm talking about. How, yeah. How about them politics? Am I right? But the, uh, I don't like that guy oh. because he is that guy. <laughs> and he said a thing I don't like and I don't agree with. And therefore, but somebody else said something I do like and I do agree with it. So I'm for them. Yeah, even though they don't even represent my state at all, or my city, or my, you know, I've never stepped foot inside of a, I, I don't know, 7-Eleven or something. <laughs> I... <laughs> you ever been at 7-Eleven on a Tuesday night around 11-70, or 70, 11-70, yeah. 11-70, yeah. Yeah, maybe like yeah. 12 o'clock. I think that's the only time I go to 7-Eleven, is 11-70. <laughs> That's the time you get the free Slurpees. Oh. It's not just it? on 7-Eleven. You can go at 11.70 o'clock and... Mm. Secret of the industry. I like that. Yeah. Okay. That's the thing okay. that 7-Eleven execs don't want you to know. Mm. The big secret. 7-Eleven execs hate this podcast. <laughs> There's the title. <laughs> Yep. Oh man, back on top, folks. That's that's what we. Do. I've always been a top. Mm. On top. That's. Whew! <laughs> 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 wow. Getting okay. steamy in here, folks. Uh. That's right. That's right. Um, we're we're fucking pretty much at at the hour so yeah i mean we talked yeah. about stuff mainly about movies this time which is good we got away from, i mean we yeah, talked about video yeah. games a lot but trying to oh my god dude we didn't even talk about the new batman <sighs> did you watch it yeah it's really it's fucking, pretty good. fucking good i dug it i really liked it I, I haven't seen anything robert pattinson's acted in since uh twilight when i was forced to watch twilight yeah. way back when so uh, same <laughs> It was it was interesting to see how he's evolved as an actor since then. It was, yeah, it was very good. Yeah, it's good. Uh, Dude, I've good been Batman. meaning to. It was. It was a very. I. It was like I hate saying like realistic, but like it was a super grounded Batman. Yeah, it was a know? good take. He didn't have. He didn't have the Lucius Fox with the whole military hookup and. Hey, here's this fucking tank for a Batmobile. It was like a, like a piece together fucking muscle car. It was kind of sick how that was pulled off. Mm -hmm. I liked that. I think something just, I appreciated yeah. about it was that it wasn't just it wasn't just another fucking Joker. You know, they they yeah. went with a different one this time. That's something I appreciate. But I also like the fact that it was established that he had already been you know fighting the he already fought the joker and won for one thing yeah so he had already like yeah. they'd already established that it what like joker didn't need an origin story or about how did i get these scars you yeah. know, not that mm -hmm. not dog and heath ledger's performance that was just at the point batman no. was in it was like every batman movie had to establish the villains the, yeah in this one they you know not really no yeah it was, it was you're going into it like you know this is a batman movie you know sort of like obviously batman's parents are dead and that's you know he's working as the batman that's his yes obviously it was it was, you know? it was a batman origin story but it wasn't a the batman origin story 
Yeah, it wasn't like an act. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was a. Uh... It's like the long Halloween. Mm-hmm. That's like his first real mm-hmm. big outing. It's kind. It's yeah, kind of the, which the feel I got from didn't it. Didn't it start on Halloween? I think so. Wasn't that? I think that was. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah and Catwoman was a big part of Long Halloween too. Yes. So I did actually read that one. It's been a while, but. So um, I appreciate it for doing that and not being. Like just another Joker yeah. origin story, like they've been doing. They had to yeah. reboot the Joker how many times? Like six, <laughs> right. seven times. Like we get it. God, He's his dude. most prolific from his whatever villain. Uh, what do you call it? Oh, God, there's a word for it. His like pantheon. Yes, or... it's it's something like that. But it's like all the villains the right that you could choose from. They only ever mm-hmm. pick the Joker and. I'm glad they went with yeah. the Riddler because he's also yeah hasn't had much representation it was a really... since Jim Carrey. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was a very different take from the Jim Carrey version, and I oh man, it like really creeps me out, dude. Yeah, it was oof, it was good. So there you go. It has the scumbag okay. seal of approval. The Batman yeah. 2022. Yeah. New Batman. Go check it out. Check it out. There's like a little five minute scene that was deleted that you can watch where he's talking to the Joker. If you, if oh, you, can, really? yeah, I, I'm glad they nice. cut it out of the movie for pretty mm. much all the reasons I stated before. But I do like the direction they were going with it because it's like kind of a Hannibal thing he's going to talk to the joker about a case so he can get more Uh information on it yeah but it's better as a oh i feel like that was a premise of a big one of the big batman stories too shit yeah dark knight returns maybe had part of that i couldn't say but i i like the way they did it i'm glad they cut it out because I'm tired yeah, just of that Joker. little tease that, that was at the end was was perfect. Yeah. It was it was a ni- it was a nice. If if, if you're gonna have Joker, you can... have him be the final villain. If this is gonna be a trilogy, have him be the final villain. Don't have him be the next. Yeah. Villain. Do something yeah. else. Do like a uh, Clay Man or whatever Sandman. Have him or uh yeah Hush Clayface Hush, Clayface. Hush mm-hmm. would be good. Hush would be dead shot. Sweet. Yeah. Oh, there was another one. Not Penguin. Like, <laughs> no, <laughs> dude. I will say, uh, I did not realize that was Colin Farrell who played Penguin. I like lost. I'm I'm usually pretty okay at like recognizing. I don't know actors' faces, but I had no idea that was uh that was Colin Farrell oh, until yeah, the end. Really? Yeah. I didn't either. Yeah. Right. Until you just mentioned it. Yeah. I guess you're right. <laughs> Yeah, I totally uh I don't know. He he I one of those rare instances where I lost the actor in the character, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Maybe I'm just not super familiar with Colin Farrell's face. No, they really uh now I'm looking at a like a comparison shot. Yeah, they really did a good job on his makeup. I had no idea. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like uh, when Gary Oldman did Winston Churchill for some oh, movie yeah. recently. Or uh, that one guy that did George Bush. Oh. He, oh God, who was that? Uh, was it, Dwayne The Rock Josh Johnson. Brolin, was that the one I'm thinking of? Maybe. Might have been Josh Brolin. He, that was my other first guess. He's been in fucking everything. Yeah. <laughs> What's Daniel Day-Lewis up to? Ooh, what is he up to? He did, uh, let's see, I remember Phantom Thread came out. I think he was in that. And then... Oh, he quit. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I have seen His anything. Last movie. Oh, jeez. Yeah, Taking Phantom Thread was the huh. last movie. Before that was Lincoln, which was good. Uh-huh. Sorry, I just, I was just thinking of prolific actors no that's up. yeah he's one of the uh he's one of the actors that the faces i look at every night before i go to sleep 
That's why I remember so many actors' faces. And Colin Farrell isn't in that mix, no. but I'm going to have to add him in. Carl Urban is, but only Carl Urban while well, he's Carl wearing Urban. the dread mask. Mm-hmm. That's the only way I recognize yeah. him. I don't know what he looks like. <laughs> Otherwise. <laughs> from the uh, <laughs> from the uh, the mouth down, that's all I recognize of Carl Urban. <laughs> now he's uh he's like the main dude in the boys on uh, Amazon Prime. Yeah, pretty. That's a pretty sick show. I, I dig it. Yeah, the boys Carl Urban good. is a good actor. I mm. haven't seen him do bad in anything at least. I mean, I can't think of anything. Uh, uh. Um, yeah, but we did it. We did it, folks. New Batman. Go, go watch. Check it. Check out new Batman. Preserve your video mm-hmm. games and any other media that you enjoy, for that matter. Yeah. Uh, what other? What else was the point? Uh, respect the moon. Respect. Yeah. Yeah. Respect the tide. Mm-hmm. Don't go swimming out during high tide. Don't be a hero. Don't think it's cool. Don't, yeah, the ocean is. It only takes like it only takes a teaspoon of water to drown. That I have heard that. It really, it does. And I mean, if you choke on it, really, you'll die, yeah. and that's technically drowning. Yeah. If you <laughs> if you choke on a teaspoon of water, then you're drowning because you're, yeah. <laughs> you know. Well, I guess if you're choking on the spoon, yeah, like you swallow the whole teaspoon. Don't swallow the whole teaspoon. Why are you drink? Why are you water. just taking a teaspoon of water anyway? Well, yes, yeah, I am. I'm just. <laughs> I'm trying to establish why I'm drowning. Because you were trying to drink water out of a spoon. <laughs> it's not how water was meant to be drank. It was meant to be drank from a plastic bottle, the way God intended. Hmm. Yeah. A plastic disposable bottle that won't biodegrade for a thousand years. It'll probably get stuck in a whale's stomach. That is what God yep. wanted. Yep. And that's what this podcast has all been about, is saving the oceans. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not about just catching sweet gnar waves all the time. It's about preserving the world that we don't belong in. We're parasites. We are literally parasites yeah. <laughs> on this great earth. <laughs> can't dispute we that. Are parasites. <laughs> can't dispute it. You can't. That's that's sound logic, my friends. Because we have done nothing, <laughs> nothing to preserve this earth. <laughs> <laughs> and on that high note, that's uh, that's where we're gonna end the episode. End it on a high note, optimistic. Yeah.